Hello to a tutorial on NX. I'm going to be doing a finite, finite element analysis. Uh, so I was working on my Portal 2 mod aperture tag and I was doing this little light beam and I was wondering if this uh, support could actually support itself. Um, so I decided to do the modeling in NX and do the element analysis. A pretty good uh, exercise and uh, tutorial video to show you how to do it in NX. So let's see, uh, first thing is this is the profile view, the side view, um, it's actually, you know, each of these squares is 4 inches on its side, so with that in mind I was able to replicate this exact beam without the actual light hand. So this is the little model that I made. Here are the dimensioning. I'm going to show you this. Uh, I'm going to be uploading this uh, on the description of the video, so you can just download it and you know not having to do it. Um, but yeah, so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a structural analysis and see how this beam will deform and where the stresses are concentrated here. So I'm just gonna go ahead. Once you have the model that you want to analyze, you start with start and go to advanced simulation once here we need to open the simulation file view and at the moment we don't really have much so we're gonna go ahead and create a new fem and simulation and this is what we're going to be doing we're going to be using the nastron solver and we're gonna do a structural analysis you can do other types of analysis here but structurally it's just uh, the simplest form. Once everything loads, we're going to see here other files. So we can just uh, close this, okay. And the first thing we need is to make a mesh of the object. So, so it can have a, like a matrix-like feel for solutions. So. It's part of the mathematical analysis that the that the program does. So we just, I'm just gonna double click this to load the second file here, which is the mesh. So now we have this option accessible, and we're going to click 3D tetrahedral mesh, and it's gonna add a whole bunch of polygons. Now uh, this model is in inches. Uh, you know you can change the size the units here so that's pretty nice and comfortable uh, but because I made it in inches uh, it's easier to visualize in inches how big a mesh is gonna be if the mesh is too big you're gonna get better results but it's gonna take a lot of uh, processing time so it's better to do uh, a not so tight mesh and then if you need later on it's possible to do a localized uh, higher mesh count, like a higher polygon count, for example, like uh, if here I'm getting a lot of stresses, the highest stresses, uh, it would be possible to make a localized higher count of the mesh so I can see better how uh, everything, uh, everything uh, it's acting like there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put a 65 uh, inches, select the bodies, and I'm just gonna press apply and it's gonna take maybe some time depending on the speed of your computer uh, you know if it's taking too long then that's an indication that your that your mesh is way too tight if it takes too fast it means that you know you're not gonna get pretty good results so this is my mesh I have six six uh, six six polygons per se uh, on a given side, so I think that's pretty good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and press cancel. If you're not happy with the results, you can just go ahead and press double click on this area, it's the 3D collectors, 3D mesh, and here's what you added. You can modify this value and have it calculate again. Okay, so once we have this, we're gonna go ahead and press here physical properties, it's then second critical step for your results in. Uh, in final element analysis 
because we need to give a material to the object. So I'm just going to go ahead and press here, choose material. And a little table is going to pop out with all of the materials that the, that the program already has. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this a as is steel. And I'm thinking maybe this one works fine. Yeah, I'm going to choose this one. I'm just gonna go OK, OK, and close this. And we already have the material in. So now we are going to actually put the loads and the constraints on the on the model. So for example, I think it's easier to start with the constraints. So I'm just gonna do a fixed constraint on these two little uh, faces. So I select that face and this other one. And that's because, uh, if we remember from my little uh, video game mod, uh, this beam is fixed on these those two sides. So that's why I'm doing it there. And you get these little blue arrows or whatever they are, icons. Um, you can modify how they show by just going to the constraints, solution, constraints, and then you can see which one highlights and then right click, edit display, and you can change here how tiny they are, apply, or how big they are. So, so if you have a small model and you know they, they cover all of your space, you want to definitely uh, reduce their size. You can also change the line width, so now it's like really thick. <laughs> Anyways, oops. now we're going to add a gravity to the whole model, and that's just to simulate gravity. So I'm just going to go ahead and press uh, gravity, and it says select object. Well, it, it actually selects already all the model, so we don't have to do anything there. You can see the little check mark. Uh, now we need the actual speed. Oops, the actual, the actual speed. So I know the gravity in meters per second. I don't know it in imperial units. So it's 9.81. And then just make sure it's going down your little arrow, or if it's going in another way, you can change it. Uh, or you can just make sure by pressing the set axis and then uh, flip reverse direction and once we have we have this zero icon it shows me that you already have a gravity going on and if we were to do the solution already we will see a little bit of uh, stress it's not a whole lot but but you know it's just something to keep in mind it depends on the precise how, how precise you want it to be anyways now as we go again to the little load and we go to force And I'm gonna choose this face because that's the face that's holding the the light. So that face. And now the expression. I'm gonna do it in Newton because I I know what a Newton is. I, I know it's pretty close to the kilo, so so I'm just gonna go ahead and say that this is about three kilos in in weight. I think that's a good approximation, it depends on the light of course. But I think three kilos, which is about three about 30 newtons is a good approximation and now important we want to select the vector which direction this is going and I want to flip the vector so it's going down because the light is going down otherwise it's gonna be the force is gonna be going up and it's not a good representation so anyways once that is done we press OK and again we see the little arrows <coughs> uh, sorry uh, we can also modify the display and whatever but once that's done, once we have the mesh, the material assigned, the gravity, the constraints, and the loads, <coughs> we can go ahead and solve. So to solve, we simply click on Solution 1, right click, and select Solve. Uh, you can modify all of these attributes if you know what they mean. I don't know what they mean, so just leave that as it is. Press OK and you're gonna get a whole bunch of X's and windows and this is gonna go up and then another windows shows up 
if I could see it here, here it is. Uh, this window is what tells you what it's doing, where it's doing, the time it's doing stuff. And it also tells you when it's done. So it's going to say job finished. So I'm just going to go ahead and wait until this is done. Uh, like I said, if you have a really close mesh, a really, a really tiny mesh, it's going to take a longer time. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and get right to it. Here it is, it says job finished, so we can simply close and cancel everything. Once that's done, we want to see the results, so here it is, results. You can just click open, right click open and just double click, that's easier for me. And here we can see everything, so I'm just going to go ahead and go to a side view, which is the other one, this one. <laughs> and I'm going to want to see the displacement. Uh, this is not the actual displacement, so that's something to keep in mind. We want to go here, right click, and we want to set, no, 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 set deformation and we want this to be an absolute to a scale of one and apply and okay so this is the actual displacement as you can see it's about it's very hard to see here even in my full resolution uh, I don't think I can zoom into that no I need to see how I can fix this little because it's really hard to see even for me Anyways, the units are in inches, so you can see that this is placed 0 0.002 inches, which is really tiny. Uh, it's really hard to see like this. I will have to take one screenshot and then go ahead and take another screenshot. But you can see, the formation is fine. It doesn't really do anything. I'm just going to delete this one. And now we have two options, the stress as elemental, elemental node. I personally think it's better to have elemental node. There is uh, an article that I'm going to be posting on the description and also here with a link to a better explanation of what they mean. So we want the von Mises. And we can see here again we need to set the, the deformation to a scale of 1. Oops. I shouldn't have pressed enter. And an absolute apply. Okay. And we can see here it's uh, the I have my units in in PSI, so I want them to show actually in megapascals. So what I did it was just simply right clicking set results and newtons per millimeter square, which is megapascals, which is what I personally know. Uh, we can see that over here it's pretty much good and good and good. There's not a whole lot of stresses. I mean, I have a 3.96 megapascal. That's really good. And I can see kind of that the main stress is over here where this uh, change of profile is. So let's say that, well, I know where the stress is and I want to fix it. I don't want it to be... I don't want it to break there first, or I want to. I want the little model to have the longer left than it can have. So to modify that, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and press ba -ba -ba, over here. Results, delete. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. And here we have the little model. We want to add a edge plan on this little area, and to do that, we simply double click. And then we go to modeling. So this is the actual, uh, this is the actual part. And then we go to modeling again because we're in advanced simulation. So now we have everything allowing allowing us to modify everything. So I think uh, an edge plan of about two inches in radius, radius is good. That's what it actually looks like. And here. Let's add one here to Oh and here 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 too. Yeah. Okay. So now we have the little piece. We go to advanced simulation again. And we need to modify the mesh. Because you can see this mesh is in 
this is not a good representation of what we actually have. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead, click here, solid 3D mesh. We're going to select it, and we're just simply gonna press. Everything is like we want it to be. So I'm just gonna press apply, and it's going to calculate again. And now we go to the upper one. Let me lower this one. So now we have the gravity and the constraints and the loads are already in a good place because we didn't modify anything that was dependent on, on that. So we're, we're clearing that area. If you had to modify that, you can just delete and apply them again. So because that is stock already set and the material is already set, I can just go ahead and press solve. Okay. So now you wait for this to finish. So here we have just finished, close, and cancel and close. And again, we got to the results. Uh, let's just check again the displacement. So I'm just going to go ahead and press set deformation again to a scale of 1. And an absolute apply. So again, we can see not very noticeable effects, so that's good. And then now ba, 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 we go to our stress elemental node von Mises. And we can see that the, the stresses are still concentrated here. So I'm just gonna set the deformation, it's already good. Oops. The results I want them in megapascals so as you can see before I had some I think it was a value of 3 now I have a value of 2 so you know it's a good reduction and it may look like this one was a bit uh, that this grew in, in stresses but that's simply because we lower the higher value so everything just changes uh, the, the color scale changes so yeah, so this is finite element analysis, it's a little bit of an introduction, but I hope this helps you with your, with all of your projects, so thanks.